Before we talk about designs, let's talk about marking. I've marked this piece with one inch markings all around all four sides. Don't forget that these markings are just the stitching lines. They are not the ruler line. We're going to be placing the ruler a quarter of an inch away from those markings. Sliding can always happen and your markings can help you keep your ruler where it needs to be. But one of the benefits about using ruler work are the markings on the ruler so you don't need to mark your project as much. But only you can decide if your project merits extra marking. Now let's go to straight cross hatching. Bringing my piece over to the machine and I'm going to drop that needle at my first marking. Remember that is the stitch line. Bring up my thread tails. And I'm just holding the uh, thread tails with my finger as I start to stitch to secure them. I'm just stitching along there. When I get to that next side, I'm going to backtrack over my outside of my block and I'm going to use my ruler this time to just kind of guide that stitching and that just helps that placement of that line be nice and straight. I'm at the next line, lining it up and now I'm just going to kind of compare the markings on my ruler to what I've marked on the fabric and make sure that they are on target and stitching back. You'll see that I've got the piece at an angle to the machine it's because I find most machines don't like to stitch directly backwards. I'm going to slide my ruler up just a little bit. It's a little short for this design. Stitching up to that mark. Remember if you've got ruler creep you just adjust for it unless it's a very important piece no one will ever notice as long as you've got your ruler in place to guide those lines so there's no wiggly marks and stitching where you're getting corrected into the right place. Stitching again. You'll note I did the uh, backtracking freehand there. You just find whichever method works for you. I tend to do a mixture of both. When this is done in a block where you're in the ditch, you don't have to be as precise as when you're working on a whole cloth piece. I'm lining up my markings. This ruler has very good markings so that I can have that one inch spacing. Many rulers on the market only have one or two lines so it won't do a full one inch uh, stretch across your block. Now I'm just going around the corner, back up to the side, to that first mark on the other side. I'm just going to pivot my work just a little bit. I don't like to pivot it a lot because if you're working on a full quilt, you don't have that luxury. Sometimes it's a little compromise between what works best for the machine and the bulk of your quilt. Stitching back over, repositioning my ruler, coming along, and I'm sliding my ruler just a little bit. It came out of position. I didn't take it away from the foot. I just realigned it. I'm going to use my ruler this time to go across that that line of stitching as I travel. Put it back down, a reposition. This is where having a ruler that's not too big is handy because it's easier to move a smaller ruler on your quilt than it is a, a larger ruler. Backtracking one last time and we'll have this block finished. Lining it up. Remember, if the far end of your ruler is not lined up exactly, like mine isn't, it doesn't matter because it only matters where it is against the foot. So I have until it gets up to the foot to reposition. And now I've finished that block and let's just put it over here so you can see it. Talk about a few points. First of all, when you're crossing these lines, if you have uh, ridges of fabric that are getting pushed up against your line of stitching that you're approaching, you may have your foot too low. So you need to raise your ruler foot just a little bit. Make sure when you raise your foot that your ruler is not going to slip underneath the foot, but you don't want that foot pushing your quilt ahead of itself. Also, you want to check and see if you've had any slipping of your lines. And I did right here. And I bet if I didn't mark, point that out to you, you wouldn't notice it. 
And I want you to keep that in mind. When you have slippage, as long as you keep that ruler against your foot and reposition the ruler, you're going to have a smooth transition to get yourself back on track. And the eye's going to just see that as a nice, even grid. And that's what I have for you for straight cross hatching. If quilters mention cross hatching, they're usually referring to the diagonal version. I'm going to show you that here on this sample. So here's the final version. And with this box method where I go around that center line, I keep all my backtracking along this edge, going around, coming to the top, backtracking across here. And you'll see the lines around the edges are thinner than when we did our straight cross hatching. And it reduces that travel, keeps the edges cleaner. I'm going to quilt it at a 45 degree angle which is a very common angle. And I've marked it with my ruler, one inch spacing, but I want you to remember that when you do it with a diagonal line, it's not gonna be a precise one inch spacing of the actual lines of stitching. I'll show you a little bit more about placement of the, your ruler and your markings in another segment. But let's move this over to the machine now and get ready to stitch it. So I'm bringing my, quilt over, my sample over to the machine. I'm going to start from corner to corner. If you've got a fairly small straight ruler, you're going to end up having to practice sliding it down so you don't have a little mark where you've had to reposition your ruler down that line of stitching. I've marked my diagonals because that's what's going to catch the eye first when someone's looking at this block. And I'm holding those tails down as I start so they don't get sucked into my machine. And I'm just following that diagonal marking when I get towards the end of my ruler, I'm going to reposition. This is also where I really need to reposition my hands anyway. I want to keep them around the needle. And I'm being very slow as I start back to make sure I don't have a discernible line where I move that ruler. And when I get down to this corner, I'm going to stitch back up the outside of my block. And I'm at my first marking. And this is where the trick comes in to reduce your, your backtracking. Place my ruler across my previous stitching, using those marks to make sure that line of stitching I'm putting in now is perpendicular to that first diagonal line. So I've stopped here at my next mark. And I'm going to, instead of backtracking on that outside line, I'm going to bounce off that and head towards this other mark. I'm going to pivot my piece, and now here when I place my ruler, I'm not lining it up with the lines on my ruler. I'm heading towards my next mark, and let's start stitching. It's a little tricky to line up with a shorter ruler. A longer ruler is best for this. So when I get down here, I'm going to head to my marking with my ruler, and I'm just checking to see how it is. And again, I didn't move it off of my foot. Starting off slow so I can make a good start. I hit that point here. I'm going to pivot my work and move my ruler again over here. What I'm doing is making a concentric path of squares or, <clears throat> or rectangles around my start point. I'm pivoting the work again. Again, with a large quilt, you're not going to be able to pivot your work. But with these little samples, I can. As my squares get larger and away from that diagonal, I'll have to move my ruler less to slide it down the line. So I've made it back to my starting point. I've made that first box around that first diagonal line. Now I'm going to backtrack. And I'm just going to start a whole nother set of squares. So I've repositioned my ruler and stitched back across. I'm at my next marking. And again, I'm just going to bounce off of that. I'm going to place my ruler kind of off here to the back of my foot, just so I don't have to reposition my block so much. And again, we're making just another box around our previous stitching. We're just bouncing off of those markings 
at a 90 degree angle to change the direction, which reduces our backtracking. Coming across here, this is where having your block already marked is really handy. So we end up doing a 45 degree angle cross hatching and not something totally different. To that next mark, repositioning my ruler again. And this is the last side I'm going to do right now. And we'll just finish this out and show you the final version in just a minute.